Question number six. Similar equation, actually the same equation, but in this case they're asking us the minimum number of grams of oxygen that is required to produce a mole of aluminum oxide. So we're going to work backwards with uh, aluminum oxide and calculate grams of oxygen. So our basis is one mole of aluminum oxide, 1.00 mole of Al2O3. Since we start with moles, we can go directly to our mole ratio. Our mole ratio, what we need to know is moles of oxygen per mole of aluminum oxide. So three moles of O2 from our balanced chemical equation for every two moles of Al2O3. And then we just need to know it says grams of oxygen, so we're going to need a molar mass right here. This was our mole ratio. Our molar mass of oxygen is just 2 times 15.999, essentially 16, and that's equal to 31.998 grams per mole. I'll put that in here, 31.998 grams per mole. If you'd put in 32, you'd get a number that is so close that you could probably find the correct answer in the multiple choice. Now all we have to do is the math. We start with one mole, multiply that by three, and then divide it by two. Remember that we multiply everything on top and divide by everything on the bottom. Then we multiply by the 31.998 and we get 47.997 grams of O2. Notice that we had three significant figures. If I round to three significant figures here I end up with 48.0 grams of O2. So our answer is J. Question number seven. The equation is correctly balanced. Calcium carbonate plus two hydrochloric acid yields calcium chloride plus water plus carbon dioxide. This is a uh, decomposition reaction. The, the calcium carbonate is breaking down into CO2, but it's also uh, the hydrogen is reacting to form uh, water as well. The question says, what is the total number of moles of CO2 formed when 20 moles of HCl is completely consumed? Again, this is stoichiometry, but it's in its simplest form. We're starting with moles and we're ending with moles. So all we're going to need is a mole ratio. Start with our basis of 20 moles of HCl. And then we look at our mole ratio of HCl to CO2. Since we want CO2, we'll put it on top. There's one mole of CO2 right here for every two moles of HCl. Moles of HCl cancels with moles of HCl. 20 times 1 divided by 2 Surely we can all do that math. 20 divided by 2 is 10 moles of CO2. So the answer is C. A propane stove operates at 78% efficiency, meaning that 78% of the propane it uses is combusted completely according to this chemical equation. This is propane plus oxygen yields carbon dioxide and water. Combustion reactions always yield carbon dioxide and water. If the stove uses 1.7 moles of propane each day, so this is our given, how many grams of carbon dioxide does it produce in one day? So since we start with moles, we'll need a mole ratio 
carbon dioxide to propane. And we'll also need the molar mass of carbon dioxide. So let's start with our given. 1.7 moles of propane, C3H8. And our mole ratio. We have 3 moles of CO2 for every 1 mole of propane, C3H8. So now our moles cancel with our moles and we're left with moles of CO2. If we add up the molar mass of carbon and our oxygen, 15.999 times 2 for our oxygen and 12.011 for our carbon, we end up with a molar mass of 44.0. It's actually 44.001 grams of CO2 per mole of CO2. Moles cancel with moles of CO2 and our answer is in grams of CO2 which is what they're asking us for grams of carbon dioxide. But there's one more step that we need to take. They said that it was only 78 percent efficient. So let's plug in our 78.0 percent efficiency we have to divide by 100% too. This saves us from having to calculate grams of CO2 and then apply the 78% efficiency. If we do that, we plug these numbers into our calculator. We have 1.7 moles times 3 moles of CO2 times our 44.0 grams per mole times our 78 percent divided by our 100 percent and we get 175.03 now notice that we have three significant figures here we have three significant figures here so my answer should be only three significant figures just like it says here record your answer and fill in the bubbles and be sure to use the correct place value so we're going to have to fill in 175 you can put in a decimal point if you want that won't affect your answer but don't put in any additional things that you may get on your calculator because this would show too much precision you only need to show the first three digits